Well, we will go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome world number one, John Rahm, to the interview room here at the 2022 Farmers Insurance Open. John, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been with you a lot lately, and it's all been good stuff. Coming off uh, top 15 finish last week at the American Express, you're making your sixth start here at the Farmers Insurance Open, three of which have resulted in top five finishes, of course, with the win, uh, your first PGA Tour win here. Um, just some thoughts on being back here this week. Uh, I'm trying to think of something I haven't said before. Um, you know, it, it is a golf course that I love. It's a city that I love. Obviously, have great memories all throughout my career here. You know, my latest win being here as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, just very excited to be here. It's one of those weeks that I look forward to every year and. It looks like the weather's going to be great, as it almost always is in San Diego. And, you know, hopefully I can put in another strong performance like I have in the past. Okay, and you're making your fourth start of the season, the second place finish at Century. Mm -hmm. um, just some thoughts on progress with your game and what you're feeling most comfortable, comfortable with as you're heading into the week. You know, I think I've said it before, and I don't think – the Century Tournament of Champions is the best indicator of form just because of how different of a golf course it is to what we play the rest of the year. Um, especially this year when we played without any win, right? It showed. Uh, it was uh, a battle to shoot a very low score to, to get up there. Um, but uh, feeling confident, feeling feeling comfortable. You know, last week was not my best week. Uh, didn't feel good. Swing-wise, nothing really felt good. Putting felt about as bad as it can feel. And I somehow still managed to sneak in the top 15. So that gives me a lot of confidence knowing that what I'm working on is, is going the right track. And when I'm having a bad week, I can still post a score. So um, hopefully I can tidy up a couple of details in, uh, in the next few weeks. But uh, hopefully I can start playing good this week. Okay. Well, with that, we'll take a few questions. And we'll start with Steve in the back. Hmm. Uh, to be honest, uh, I feel like I'm so in my routine that it feels like a Wednesday. Uh, just not playing a pro am, but it feels like a Wednesday. I, you know, I drove in, I drove over with my caddy Sunday night, and uh, we did some practice yesterday. So yeah, it almost feels like a, like a Wednesday. Um, I can see for some people, uh, you know, if you get in Monday, especially if you run into some trouble in the in the travel. Um, even though for most of us it's probably just a two-hour driver. But if you grab into some added stress, you don't have that extra day to just settle down and get going. But uh, I wouldn't say this much a difference. And you said you were working, you're, you're happy with some of the things you've been working mm -hmm. on. Is there anything specific that you can evolve or just everything? Uh, just trying to be better. Um, that, that's about it. Nothing specific I don't, I don't want to talk about. I mean, I probably don't have enough time to talk about everything that I have in my mind. But... Uh, yeah, just, you know, I think it was more a sense of knowing that with what I've been working on, when I'm not feeling good, I can still put in uh, a good week. John, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but if I made you set up czar on the PGA Tour for you and the other best players in the world, what would the ideal setup of a golf course look like? I'm talking length, rough length, green speeds, everything what would it look like and why a lot of it depends on the golf course but I would like a setup that would challenge us in every aspect of the game I would like fairways to be narrow I would like the rough to be up so you can't just miss the fairway and go for the green with whatever you want right uh, I would like the greens to be firm they don't need to be ridiculously firm but firm and the greens at the right speed, right? That's tough to say because you have greens here, for example, that if you had them rolling 13, would be unplayable because of how, how slope they are, right? So according to the greens you are. But I think, yeah, a golf course that would challenge us in every aspect of the game, right? Um, and that's where I believe you would find the best player, right? Somebody whose whole game completely is playing good throughout. And if something is missing, you're going to have to make up with really good stuff, you know, on the other other parts of your game. Um, but that question is very much dependent on what golf course you're playing at, right? So um, what weather and where you're at, it's, it's a little bit of that. But I, I think the general answer would be something that would challenge players in every aspect. How many times a year do you think you take a, it's an outdoor sport, and you mm -hmm. just dump for a week, you can't help it kind of soft. How many times a year on the PGA Tour do you feel like you have that examination? 
What do you mean? In, in what sense? Like, in terms of a, a challenging test for you and other best players? Uh, well, like I said, a lot of times it depends on the golf course. There's golf courses that are going to be challenging regardless, like this one. Um, but it, it's tough. I mean, it all depends on the year because sometimes you're going to have bad weather. Right, and that changes aspects of things. But th there's, there's some weeks every year that are going to be a challenge, right? Like playing LA, playing Riff, no matter how it, is, how it is, those greens are always going to be a challenge. Uh, Memorial, it's always going to be a challenge. In my mind, Colonial, even though it's not long, it's not crazy as rough, it's always a challenge. Majors are always a challenge. The Players' Championship is always a challenge, right? Uh, and I think a lot of those courses, the main aspect is the design of the course more than the setup, right? You play in different setups, you play those greens firm and soft, and the score is always uh, around the same, right? And it's only in the years where the weather gets crazy, where the, you have crazy high scores. And Todd and then Rice. John, do you have any routines or superstitions in coming to San Diego as far as anywhere that you go every time you're here or things that you do that just make you feel at home again here? I'm not I'm not superstitious at all. I mean, I'm very very minimally superstitious. But there are some places I like to go. Um, one of the I haven't gone yet because I couldn't yesterday. But I'll probably make it a point to go before I leave. Uh, I always go to Ken Sushi Workshop. Uh, it's always a must go for me. It's uh, when it comes to sushi experience, the best I've had in my in, in my career. So. Uh, you know, I didn't get to go to Tokyo and, and experience it there, but I've heard some people say that this is up there as well. Uh, and then there's just a couple places, you know. Uh, if I go to Callaway, we always go to, uh, we always get the sandwiches from uh, Mendocino Farms. Yeah. I always go to Urban Plates, right? Those are the little things. And then when it comes to coffee, because I do like my coffee in the morning, I will make a stop. Uh, I will, don't know if I'll do it every morning, but I will make a stop at uh, Bird Rock Coffee. Did you come back here at all after the Open? Have you been back mm -hmm. since then? Oh, yeah. and, and I come often. I mean, it's I've said it many times. It's my family's favorite city. Uh, up until recently, my swing coach, Dave Phillips, uh, lived here, but he spends a lot of time here, right? So I did those two things, and then the fact that the Callaway headquarters is here, I, I do come here. It's a lot of times when I feel like I need a weekend without distractions, right, where I just come and practice, I will come and 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 do that so so I, I think I mean we're probably here once every two months uh, maybe six times a year so it's, uh, it's a good estimate to how much we come that will be at the very least and Doug if you don't mind one more um, Go ahead. walking around here um, playing practice rounds mm -hmm. now being the open champion from here mm -hmm. what is that like even relative to walking around here as a farmers open champion it doesn't change that much because the golf course is so different, right? Uh, because of the time of year, and uh, we rarely see the greens as firm as we see them as, at the at the open, uh, and we rarely see the rough as high as we saw it at the open, right? Uh, plus, there's a little bit of setup changes. Um, Fairways are all, we're also not running as much as they were at the open, so the, we do play different, right? Six is usually a par five, fifteen. At least in the past, we haven't played it from the back tee. Um, 18, we usually go one tee up as well. So it changes. Um, but the feeling doesn't change. Still a place that I love and still a place that I've done great on. If anything, I, every time I go by, I'll, I'll remember the times that I had a chance to win and I didn't. Uh, I don't know. That's just me as a competitor, always wanting more. So more than, than what I've done. But I'm pretty sure on this back nine, uh, when I play the back nine today, I'll, you know, I'll be remembering certain moments of, uh, of that Sunday. Bryce. Hey, John. Um, as a former Farmers champion, last year Patrick Reed wins going mm -hmm. away by five strokes, but really all the discussion was about the embedded ball mm -hmm. ruling in the third round. I know you're worrying about your own rounds at that point. But... What, what what are your thoughts on how different that discussion was around the winner last year as compared to when you won or anybody wins here? In what sense? I mean, he we're talking about one instance. Uh, he did win by five, right? So he played better than everybody else by quite a bit. So uh, we're talking about an instance where only he knows what happened, right? Uh, I'm in no room to judge because the footage is... It's not the best 
in that sense. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, he is a 2021 Farmers Insurance Open champion, and he did it by five. So it was a great play in all week. Yeah, and one quick follow-up. More about his game than about the kind of mm -hmm. other questions around his game. Um, do you think some of that discussion overshadows what he can do on a golf course? It could, yeah, it can. Because for those people that haven't seen it live, Patrick Reed has one of the best short games, if not the best short game on tour, uh, week in and week out. You know, one of the most impressive things I remember seeing, I was playing with him at the Players last year. And, you know, on those, those screens on the golf course, they show a lot of times your stats, right? And it was one hole where he had a putt from, like, six feet. And I said, okay, he says, inside 10 feet, Patrick Reed, he's top 10, strokes game putting. Next one's 10 to 15 feet, he's top 10. Next one's 15 to 20 feet, he's top 10. Next one's 20 to 25, he's top 10. And I kept looking at it like, this is a freaking joke. Right? I'm like, no wonder any time his ball striking is somewhat average, he's up there to win a tournament. With this short game, I mean, it's, you know, that's why he's great in match play as well. I mean, uh, so I think it's one of the things a lot of people can learn from is, is that short game he has. He has wonderful hands. I know he spends a lot of time on it, but uh, I, I can see how he gets lost in translation or in the discussion with other things that, that have happened. Hey, John, welcome back to San Diego. Thank you. Um, curious what uh, memories or feelings or experiences from the U.S. Open in particular come flooding back when you're here or maybe the first time you, you returned? Uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say so many. It would probably hit me a little bit more when I'm on, a, on 18 green, you know, uh, remembering uh, me with my dad and my son standing there on Father's Day, right? I think it'll hit me a little bit more. Uh, I don't know where the pin locations are, but I'm playing with my friend Jared who Monday qualified, and I'm sure he's going to want to hear about the putts in 17 and 18. Uh, and I don't blame him. I would ask as well. <laughs> but I, I don't know exactly what to tell you because uh, there's so many things that come out to mind, right? And the first thing is it's an incredible sense of of pride just because... You know, I remember where I come from, and I remember all those times when I was a kid thinking, oh, this is to win a major, and heck, I have the moment right here, right? So it's it's an incredible sense of pride to myself from all those times when I was a kid and said, one day I'll be a major champion, and, and being able to do it, and being able to do it at a place that I love so much. So hopefully I can keep adding to it, uh, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. You mentioned all the places you like to visit around town. You proposed to Kelly on a trail. Is is that part of the checklist as well when you guys are here? <laughs> you know, that was the one and only time I've gone on the trails. <laughs> she does love them. She does do it. Um, and that was one of the reasons. I always told her, because I, I feel like it's, very, it's this thing, right, where nowadays you're expected to have this massive movie proposal and you see it on social media of the people that do it and they have this massive production and I kept I told her for years when we do it we're gonna be in sweatpants and she didn't believe me right so in fact we were in sweatpants and a hike and it, it turned out to be great you know it's uh, it turned out to be us very intimate moment um, I don't know if she's been back since I think she has uh, <laughs> We did step outside the rope line to, to be able to do what we did, where we did it. Uh, but, you know, can't have the rope on the picture, obviously. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'll go back again. I'm sure when, when Kip and our, and our future kids are old enough, we'll probably visit it again. You know, it's, uh, it's a very special place. But if we or she doesn't go on the hike, she def definitely visits uh, the beach because we ended up walking back on the beach. So uh, I know she has gone back. And, yeah, like I said, we do the little things that remind us of, of certain things. We have Ron, and then we'll finish up with Steve. Considering all the time you've spent around here, have you ever considered hopping on one of those paragliders? My dad was a paraglider. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I still don't understand how they have the guys to take off running and jump off a cliff. <laughs> so no temptation when you're watching them float? Yeah, no, I have no interest in even being close to that. No <laughs> chance. Uh, but it's funny when, especially at the U.S. Open, my dad kept seeing them because there was more of them, right? And on four, they were really close to us. And he was telling me, man, I asked him, would you be able to do it? Like, he hasn't done it in 20 plus years, right? I'm like, would you be able to do it? Because uh, I'm sure the technology has changed. 
Yeah, and obviously, what is he going to say? But yeah, of course, no problem, right? Uh, and he does get the the feeling of wanting to do it. And I think me and mom are like, yeah, you're not getting on. You're not, not put, you're not putting the parachute on. So I'm pretty sure the last time he did it, he broke his elbow. Uh, he did have a crash landing, so I think that was when my dad and my mom said, yeah, yeah we're parents now. You're not doing this again. <laughs> uh, but um, as far as I'm concerned, no. Yeah, I have no interest on, on doing it. But uh, it does look really cool. It does look like uh, if you can be under control and know what you're doing, like a really, really exciting experience. Is that a adrenaline He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he found golf and figured, you know, this is a much safer route for my heart. <laughs> All right, we'll finish up with Steve. Not the greatest way to finish, John. I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> alluding to an earlier question about course setup, um, your reaction to the video that mm -hmm. went viral about uh, in the second round last week? Mm -hmm. My reaction? I mean, I think the video is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I mean, we're the PGA Tour. We're the best golfers on the planet, and we're playing a golf course where missing the fairway means absolutely nothing. There was times where missing a fairway by an inch was worse than missing a fairway by 20 yards. That, to me, is a mistake. Um, I don't know what else to say, right? I also understand we're in the desert. Um, you can't oversee the entire golf course and things like that can't happen. But, yeah, we played a lot of golf with zero rough. It's just, I don't know. I mean, yeah, if I knew somebody was recording, I wouldn't say it the way I did, but I was just thinking out loud and letting some frustration out because that's how I felt, right? I mean, no matter where you hit it, you're going to be able to hit it on the green, and it becomes a putting contest. Who can make the putts? That's about it. There's no premium for anything else, right? I mean, the perfect example was hole 14. It's a hole that usually hit in the fairway is very, very important because if you miss it and you're in the rough, it's a tough green to hit and make a birdie on. And this time, we were hitting driver to 20 yards off the green because there was no rough, right? Um, that's the best example I can think of. And there's a couple others. I mean, I can tell you right now, with the way I struck the ball last week and the way I put it, if it was in, uh, let's say, major championship conditions, I probably wouldn't have made the cut, let alone finish 14th. Or I shouldn't have, I believe. Maybe, maybe not. but. I just think it was a bit too easy for the best players in the world. That's, uh, that, that's just my opinion. Okay. Well, John, we appreciate your time as always. Thank Certainly you. wish you the best of luck this week. Thank you. Thank you.